President Obama gave a big prose, not poetry, grown-up speech today, laying out his view of the economic crisis and explaining why his administration has chosen the policies it has chosen to respond. What's the character of the opposition to those policies right now? Well, there are the down with Obama, anti-tax, anti-spending, teabagging protests. Everyone is looking forward to seeing those go nuts tomorrow on tax day. And then there's the anti-Obama Republicans in Congress who have just launched a new website showcasing their alternatives to Obama's policies. A Republican congressional aide today explaining to Politico.com, quote, the short-term tactical reason for the site is to dispel the myth about having zero ideas. I spent three full minutes studying every word of the new House Republican Economic Solutions Center website today. Trust me, you do not need to set aside more than three minutes to read it because it does not actually have very many words on it. Also, it is organized in cartoon form. Uh, the Cartoon House Republican Economic Solutions Center asks four pressing questions and proposes the same answer to all of them. How will I grow my savings? Tax cuts, specifically cutting the capital gains tax. How should we use taxpayer money? Tax cuts, permanently extend the Bush tax cuts. And for extra bonus points, freeze the budget. How will I keep my job? The diverse and innovative plan the Republicans are offering here is a combination of tax deductions, tax relief, and tax freedom. In other words, more tax cuts. The last question, how will I keep my house? Surprise answer here, tax cuts. And also limiting lawsuits against mortgage companies because tort reform will solve the housing crisis? So we've got tort reform, we've got a spending freeze, and of course we've got 32 flavors of tax cuts. Does that sound like a plan? Joining us now is Jared Bernstein, Chief Economist and Economic Policy Advisor to the Vice President, Joe Biden. Dr. Bernstein, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. President Obama said today, economists on both the left and the right agree that the last thing a government should do in the middle of a recession is to cut back on spending. But Republicans are not conceding that. They are still arguing for a spending freeze and I don't think they're kidding about it, do you? Uh, no, I don't think they are, and I think they need to get out a, a little bit more, maybe a lot more. Uh, if you look at what's going on throughout this country, the first thing you're struck with, certainly the first thing the president thinks about when he reflects on how the economy is doing, is, is, is the kinds of job and income opportunities that middle class families are facing right now. And we know that there is an intense contraction going on in this economy vis-a-vis -vis jobs. We know the unemployment rate stands at 8.5 percent nationally. But there are states, uh, about five or six states, that are in double digits. The idea that you would retrench as a government, kind of, uh, uh, you know, go, go and hide under the rubric of trickle down or supply side economics, is policy from another universe, a universe that has nothing to do with the economic re realities facing families today. It seems like, in terms of their message, they are really counting on the idea of tax cuts. They are suggesting cutting the capital gains well, tax, extending the Bush tax cuts. They want to cut the, 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 the tax rate for the richest, the highest tax rate in the country. They want to cut it by 10 points. It would be tripling the Bush tax cut. That's their, that's well, their message. You know, Rachel, what I think they're counting on is that people have incredibly short memories. Because if you think back not too far, uh, we tried it their way, and it didn't work. Now, I'm not saying we tried it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. We had an eight-year program of supply-side, trickle-down economics based on cutting taxes for those at the top of the scale under the uh, fairy tale that uh, it's going to create robust prosperity for everybody else. That if you deregulate financial industry, that markets will self-correct and any problems, any bumps in the road, they'll fix them themselves. It's precisely what got us to where we are. So I don't think it's a serious uh, a debate. And, and I think the president had it exactly right. If you pull out this group of folks who are who are, are kind of stuck in this tape loop from you know X years ago, and you look at people who are seriously looking at the economy today, and you could you could find conservatives, uh, you will you will pe see people who recognize that we do have to engage in some re-regulation, some oversight of financial markets. We do have to uh, 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 spend in the current climate uh, on, on a stimulus package to create or save three and a half million jobs we now in the end of next year to essentially uh, get this economy back on track so that we can get out of the way and let the private sector engine of growth take over.
On the issue of regulation, I was struck today by the president's language around what we need to think about when we approach re-regulating the financial sector. And he was talking about needing a 21st century set of regulations, right. not a 20th century uh, set of regulations. I was struck by that because that's the same language that was used by the deregulators, by the conservatives in both parties, to push for deregulation in the 90s. I wonder if there is a case to be made that there ought to be an ideological, philosophical case presented by the president, by the vice president, for why deregulation was the wrong idea, rather than just this talk about modernization? Uh, you know, I, I think that that's certainly a principle that the president and the vice president understand and one that uh, many of uh, uh, the economic advisors get a, as well. Uh, the idea is that if you sort of came into this with a, a notion that, you know, Alan Greenspan was, was known for promoting, that these markets don't need to be monitored because they correct themselves. Something Greenspan, to his very considerable credit, uh, realized that he had wrong, um, that these markets will not self-correct. And again, the important thing to recognize, Rachel, is that there is left-right consensus on this point. Now, we can have very good debates about how far such oversight should go, about what the, what's the best way to deal with the banking sector, the non-banking sector, the AIGs of the world. Uh, and, and we will have those debates. And in fact, if the Republicans or anybody else wants to put some good ideas up on solutions uh, dot whatever, we'll go there and we'll, we'll, we'll look at them and we'll talk about it. But the idea that you could somehow ignore uh, the less of the past uh, uh, eight years. Uh, that's just unacceptable to this president. Jared Bernstein is chief economist and economic policy advisor to Vice President Joe Biden. Jared, thank you so much for coming on the show. We hope to have you back more frequently. It's great to talk to you. Thank you, Rachel. I'll see you soon.